Okay, Gewaltig. Mm-hmm. Good morning, what's up? Bring him a boy. Ah? Well, good, okay. Okay, good morning everybody. Sorry for my delay. Welcome. If you didn't get a copy, there's more copies here. Thank you, Rabbi Nechemia, for the copies, as always. So we'll continue the Maimah today, Bechol Dar Vadar from Tavshin Lama Dalad. We're up to page Resh Ayin Dalad, the second paragraph, Vihine. Right before chapter 5, right before Hey, Resh Ayin Dalad, the second paragraph. Everybody remembers last class? Dein Ganeid and Dein Elam Haba. Huh? You remember Gehenim? <laughs> this is good. Okay, I hope we'll be able to finish the Maimah today, Bli Nader. Tomorrow we have a class for women, 9.30. Thursday I'm away. I have a, a lecture in California. Shabbos, those who are here, we have uh, this regular Shabbos Shurim and also the Shabbos Hagadol. The Russia, a quarter to six and ten to Gimel. Everybody is invited, men and women and children. Bezid Hashem on Shabbos. Today's class is dedicated by Reb Ezra David Philip. Blessings for all of Israel and for all of the Jewish people. May we celebrate Pesach this year in Yerushalayim. As David is very happy and thanking Hashem for celebrating his first Pesach as a Jew. Mazel Tov, So you can really have Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. <laughs> I met somebody else a few days ago. You know, Nissan Black, Nissan Black. So he told me that when he was before his conversion, so uh, on Shabbat, you know, a non Jew is not supposed to keep Shabbos. So what was he supposed to do, Shabbos? It's still Shabbos, but he's not allowed to keep it. So he said he would listen to my classes. <laughs> he would learn Chsidis on Shabbos and listen and watch. Huh? The Hest? <laughs> That's how he kept Shabbos. <laughs> so it was kill- it's called killing two birds with one stone. He's being Mechal Shabbos, and he's uh, learning Chassidus. <laughs> Did it at Dafka on Shabbos? Shabbos, but did he have a better time? 
<laughs> okay. So what was the main the main nekuda? That when it says bechol dar v'dar chayiv adam liris atzm akili yatzm emitzrayim, in every generation a person ought to see themselves as though they themselves left Mitzrayim. And as the Tanya adds, the Balatanya adds bechol yom v'yom, not just bechol dar v'dar, but bechol yom v'yom every day. And that's why we mention Yitzis Mitzrayim in halacha every single day, by day and by night. So it really represents not just a memory from the past, but work in the present. And for that, a person has to be able to identify two things. First of all, what, what is my Mitzrayim? And what does it mean for me, Yitzias Mitzrayim? If I'm missing one of those two levels of awareness, I can't go out of Mitzrayim. If a person can't acknowledge what their Mitzrayim is. And as we explain, Mitzrayim comes from the word Mitzarim, Ukvulim, which means those forces or those thoughts or those instincts or those paradigms or those patterns that keep a person stuck in a particular way of operating and thinking and functioning, which is very restrictive. It confines you, it limits you, it, it suppresses you, it represses you. It turns me into a slave to forces, maybe inside of me, not outside of me. But there it's, it's slavery because it completely takes you away, or at least partially takes you away from who you really are. And in a way, that's a worse slavery than any other slavery, because another slavery is identifiable slavery. You know, I'm a slave to somebody, I'm working for somebody, and it's horrible, whatever it may be, whatever it may look like. But when I'm a slave to myself, I could define that as gula. <laughs> There's nobody in control. But really, you know, the, 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 the lowest parts, the, the, the most external, the most uh, wounded parts of me are controlling me. So sometimes it's the worst form of slavery because it's like, it's, it's, it, it seems like uh, it's voluntary. It's really not. A person is a slave. So every person, every day, I need to identify, you know, what are my coping mechanisms that have been triggered today? You know, what am I doing because this is just how I cope and it's what I'm used to. It's, it's maybe a comfort zone, but it's a gullus, it's a mitzrayim. And how do we know that it's, how do a person knows it's, it's a gullus? They see the impact. They see how it takes them away from their true self, takes them away from their happiness, from their serenity, from their living life fully, from having an open heart, from having an open mind, from being able to live with, with love and with truth, with authenticity and with joy and with vulnerability. person is locked. So I'm coping, I'm surviving, but I'm surviving in exile. And sometimes it's hard to identify what are those coping mechanisms, because remember, real Mitzrayim means it doesn't call itself Mitzrayim. It calls itself Geula, right? Pare says, this is your place. You don't have another place. And even the Jews themselves, whenever there's a crisis in the desert, what do they say? Let's go back to Mitzrayim. I, Mitzrayim, was a sick place. They were killing you and your kids. But somehow, there's a familiar evil that's better than an unfamiliar evil. It's like, at least I know what to expect. You know, it's like uh, women who go back to, uh, it's called the Stockholm Syndrome. You know, a battered woman syndrome. It's like, it's familiar, you know, at least it's a place to call mine. It's a very big challenge in life because Pare says, this is your place. Where, where, you, where are you going? There's no, <laughs> me Hashem, he tells Moshe, whoever heard of God who said he should go out of himself, there's no such a thing. It's all your imagination. You're Meshagasen. This is the place. And that's the most powerful thing about Mitzrayim, that its appeal is, this is reality. This is reality. So there's an inner voice of Moshe Rabbeinu inside that says it's not reality. <laughs> it's called stuckness. It's called illness. It's called, it's called wounds. It's called coping. It's called surviving. It's not thriving. It's, it's darkness. It's not light. It's misery. It's not happiness. But as the Torah says in Parshas Ve'eda, V'loi shamu el b'nei Yisrael el Moshe mi koitze ruach o me'avoyda kasha. When you have short breath, <sighs> <laughs> Rashi says, the Shemasek said, a person who works hard, you can barely breathe. Oh, somebody's choking me, I can barely breathe. And I'm an Avaid Kasha. I can't even, I can't hear Moshe. Not Moshe outside of me, and not Moshe inside of me. It's Hainu Hach. Like it says in Tanya, every Jew has a little, a little Moshe inside of him. Moshe is not just outside, Moshe is inside. There's the voice of Moshe. Could the Goyal Yisrael. There's the voice of the Redeemer inside of you. Like it says, the Moir and Ayim writes, Rabbi Nachum of Chernobyl in Parshas uh, Chukas, that the Baal Shem Tov said that every Jew has a nitzutz of Mashiach. 
And when every person actualizes their spark of Mashiach together, it creates the flame of Mashiach HaKloli, the collective redemption in the world. So the person's inner avoida. sometimes people ask, you know, there's so much going on in the world, it's a crazy world. And between Iran and Hamas and Syria and Hezbollah and, and Biden and everything else in the world, uh, I hope I didn't lose any listeners just now. Okay. <laughs> They're not up yet. Okay. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> so a person says, what, what, I'm supposed to now focus on my own Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. You know how many things are going on, right? <laughs> In the 1960s, once the Rebbe Lubavitcher was fabricating, he said, a Jew says, well, you know how many things are going on in Vietnam? Who's going to advise uh, President Johnson what he has to do in Vietnam if not me? You want me to say a capital till him? You want me to daven? You want me to learn? Somebody has to advise President Johnson what to do in Vietnam. Then everything was Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam. <laughs> so the truth is, it's usually an excuse Right, near Pimatim, near Pim. I don't want to do what I have to do. So I say, there's the whole world going crazy. What, 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 what? I'm going to do small things. But the truth is, it's usually it's a very good technique from the Yitzhahara for Jews who are busy with the whole world. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a global person. You want me to be a local person? But the truth is, it's much deeper than that. And that is, everything is connected, and everybody is connected, and everything is one. When a person goes out of Mitzrayim, inside their own heart, it has a ripple effect on many, many levels. What we know, and much more what we don't know. That's what he said earlier in the Mayim. The heart, the world is in the heart of a person. You know, there's like a little globe in the heart of a person. And when I shift things, that's what the, the, the Mayim Nayim says, when you reveal the nitzots of Geula inside your little globe, it has a ripple effect. It's not Stam. You're, dis you're disconnected, you're not worried. On the contrary, it means that I am contributing my part the way I could, the tools that Hashem gave me to show up in a situation of Mitzrayim, of creating my mini Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And it's not so many, it's pretty big. The micro and the macro are very much connected. So first I have to be able to identify what that is. What are my coping mechanisms today? And as I said, Mitzrayim doesn't like the word coping. Mitzrayim likes the word, this is it. This is not, everything else is coping. This is reality, but it's not. And the second thing is, and, and therefore if it's koitze ruach, if I'm short of breath, avoid the kosh, I can't even begin. And that's the best thing Parai understands. What's the best thing to keep people under tyranny? When Moshe comes and asks him to li liberate the Jewish people, what does he say? You're not working hard enough. If they would be working a little harder, they would stop having stupid dreams. So he imposes a new quota that now they have to collect bricks. So they could work even harder. So now they don't have any time to breathe because when you don't have time to breathe, you don't have time to think. When you don't have time to think, you don't have time to feel. When you don't have time to feel, you just function like a survival, in a survival mode as a robot just to get through another hour, another day. And it's true even emotionally. It, I mean, it's not only it's true emotionally, everybody knows, right, that sometimes being busy looks like a good thing. And it is a good thing. It's a good thing to be busy. It's a good thing to be done. But very often especially in today's generation, busyness is used as a way of avoiding any awareness of life. What were you? Somebody got to pay the bills, and it's true, somebody has to pay the bills, and somebody has to work. But very often there's so much pressure to do that without the pause, I can't even begin to hear what Moshe Rabbeinu has to say, the Moshe Rabbeinu inside of me. Because there's always another thing, and another thing, and another thing. Right? The pause is critical. That's the whole idea of Shabbos, of Yom Tov, pause. Why do you have to pause? Because without pausing, without pausing, it's just, it's, it, everything is a rote. They say there was a, a very famous pianist. He, did, he was world-renowned, so his friend, who studied with him, asked him, I also play piano just like you. I also know how to read notes eloquently. Well, how did you reach such success, such fame? <laughs> We both, I play the notes and you play the notes. He said it's the pauses that make the difference. <laughs> it's the pauses. It's the silence between the notes. He said that's what I mastered, you didn't master. It's a very deep answer in life. We're all playing notes, everybody, we and knacked and knacked. It's the pause 
It's the silence. This is a good breast of art, yeah? <laughs> He's baited us. <laughs> It's the, huh? Yeah. Badad Yeshev. Badad Yeshev, Mechutz Lamachna Meshavai. Badad is the word, is Badadus. Badad. So it's the pause that they could pause and suddenly things start coming up and like, wow. And it's the curiosity that one must have to what's happening inside just to be curious. Because when I'm curious, I could start asking uncomfortable questions. When I start asking uncomfortable questions, it's saying, oh, wow, there's a Pada here, there's an Egypt here, there's a Golos here. There's a word from the Chidush Harim. Chidush Harim, the Bich the first Gad Rebbe, he says, it says in Parshas Ve'eda, Hashem tells Moshe, Vo'itzesi Eschem, there's the four languages of Gula, Vo'itzesi, Vitzalti, Vigalti, Vilakachti, and we drink the four cups. It says in Yerushalmi, parallel to those four languages. The first one is Vo'itzesi. I will take you out. So the expression is, I will take you out from the civilized of Mitzrayim. So literally it's translated, civilized as sevel, is the suffering, the leiden, the burden, the burden of Mitzrayim. Civilized, I think it actually says, the burden, the heaviness of Mitzrayim, the crushing, the crushing uh, pressure of Mitzrayim. But the Chidush Arim says, that the word civilized actually, in its shoyrish, its etymology, comes from the word, like we say today in Hebrew, savlanut. What does savlanut mean? Yeah, if you're online in Israel, yeah, they say savlanut, 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 yeah? And if you don't have savlanut, it'll smack you in the face. Savlanut, savlanut. <laughs> patience, patience, patience. The word savlanut comes from the word lizbol, which means to tolerate. Tolerate, tolerance, right? Tolerate. Don't react. So the Chiddush Shalim says, V'yitzesi eschem metachas sivlis mitzrayim. I'm going to liberate you from your tolerance of mitzrayim, from your savlanut. You hear? It's a moida de kivort. Your savlanut. How long are you going to have savlanut for such dysfunction, for such evil, for such abuse? Right? It's what the Israeli leaders need to get liberated from savlanut. Savlanut. The whole world. Savlanut, savlanut. That's the Jewish motto today. Savlanut, savlanut. Lahavlig. You know what lahavlig means? Lahavlig means in the face of evil, you're quiet. So you don't make waves. In the name of that, savlanut is a beautiful quality. To have patience to be calm, <laughs> to control your temper. But sometimes, savlanot, like every good middah is an evil middah. It's a horrible, horrible middah. Right? When Moshe Rabbeinu saw an Egyptian beating a Jew, he didn't have savlanot. They could have also told him, savlanot, savlanot. <laughs> well, think about it, how to respond, when to respond. I'll make an alliance with, with, with my mother, Batya. We'll do a lot of interesting things. By that time, the Jew would be dead. So Moshe, what he did was, this is, this is how Moshe thinks. Because Moshe is Geula. And when a person is in Geula, they think a certain way. It's how Geula <laughs> thinks and how Golis thinks. But if the Kaitse Ruach, if there's no pause, so, I'm so stuck in it, and then Savlanut becomes part of it. I have to become sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you become sick and tired of being sick and tired, you don't have to be sick and tired. That was very profound, no? <laughs> the second thing I have to understand is what Geula looks like. It's very nice to say, this is Mitzrayim, and where you're heading? Where you going to a desert? Where you, where, what's your substitute for Mitzrayim? Another Mitzrayim, another Parai. If I go out of Mitzrayim to go into another Mitzrayim, I leave one Parai to go to another Parai, so stay ready by the first Parai, at least you don't have to go through this whole ruckus. And that's the second challenge. I have to know what Golos is, and I have to know what Geula looks like. If I have one without the other, it's very hard to go through this transformation. So this is the Bechol Dor V'Dor, Bechol Yom V'Yom, to be able to identify today what, is, what does stuckness look like today in my own personal Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim Agvulim, that I need to leave, and to what am I leaving? And one of the main points that the Maimah brought out was that this is expressed 
in the Pasuk in Tehillim, David HaMelech says, Tehillim, what is it, Samach Vav, right? I'm sorry, Tehillim Ayin Gimel, Tehillim Ayin Gimel. Kala She'edi Yulavavi. Yeah, you remember, Tzur Levavi V'chelki Elekim La'olam. After saying, Mili Bashamayim V'imcha L'chafatz Tibaretz. <laughs> Mitzrayim can exist on so many different levels. And sometimes it doesn't call itself Mitzrayim, it can even call itself Gan Eden. <laughs> sometimes Mitzrayim could call itself by the name of Gan Eden. And Olam Haba, and Olam Haza, and Gan Eden Elyon, and Gan Eden Atachta. But relative to the MS, the ultimate truth, and the ultimate reality, and the ultimate reality of your own soul, and what your soul really is, and really craves, and really yearns, it's a, it's a jail. It's maybe a beautiful jail, it's a sophisticated jail, maybe even a holy jail. Maybe, but it's still a jail. And that's what he brought, that the Tzamech Tzedek says, that during his dveikas, the Alter Rebbe, would often say, Zeh, ich will garnist. Ich will nicht dein Eilam Hase, ich will nicht dein Eilam Habe, ich will nicht dein Ganedna Elyon, dein Ganedna Tachten, ich will nicht dein Ganedna Elyon, ich will mehr nicht als dich allein. See, I don't want anything, I don't want... This world, I don't want the next world, I don't want the lower paradise, the lower level of paradise, I don't want the higher level of paradise. And the, the way he said it in Yiddish was, I don't want your Ganeid, I don't want your Elam Hab, I don't want your lower level of paradise, your higher level. What do I want? So what do I want? It's not that I don't want nothing, I'm not numb, I want, I want a lot, but I want you. And as he said, he didn't only say I want you, he said I want you alone, the way you are in your essence which is alone. How can I want you alone? So there's no I. And the answer is because that's the real I. The real I is that it's part and one of Einoid Mulvada. So, ich will manage das dich. And what's dich alein? Not just you alone, nothing else. He said, I want you. It's you. It's not somebody else. I want you the way you're alein. Ale- and alein is that deepest core of reality of Einoid Mulvada where everything is part of you. Hashem Echad, in the true meaning of Hashem Echad, that everything is a derivative of Achtos Hapshut, of the undefined unity. And in a person's life, what does that mean? On one hand, it looks like it's such a lofty and sublime level that's like beyond everything. What, even Gan Eden is not tempting. It's hard enough to deal with Olam Hazard temptations, and now you tell me Gan Eden is a good thing. What, people work their whole life to get Gan Eden, to get Olam Haba. And here, mit ein Vart <laughs> To be dismissive, can't say Lamaba. This is what everybody's working for. A lot of Svarim say the tachlis of everything is to get a Lamaba. And here he says, <laughs> yeah, it's, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage. The question is what Lamaba is. Huh? The question is what Lamaba is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zog's good. So that's what he says right now. Right. Right. If I'm there, so he's not alone. Right? So I say, I want to be with you in the room when you're there alone. So then I can't be there. <laughs> and here it's not just a technical issue. Like if you're alone, alone means that there's no other reality. So that means that that's really what the Nisham is looking for. The Nisham is looking for not to be, but to be not. To cease to be. In other words, the deepest desire of the neshama is complete, complete vacus, complete oneness where there's absolutely no differentiation. So the deepest I is that the I is completely dichale. And it's not somebody who says, oh, you want me to be a shmata? You want me to be a doormat? No, a doormat is in the room. It's not dichalein. <laughs> if you're a doormat, <laughs> if you think you're a shmata, that's not dichalein. Dichalein means you are Hashem. The Hesed of Avram. If I'm a Shmata, it's not Dechalein. There's you and there's a Shmata. It's called me. <laughs> the deepest bittle, the deepest bittle is the most infinite form of empowerment. And, it, and it's complete bittle. Because there's no differentiation between the person and, 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 and Hashem. And that's like in Halachi, you have the concept of Shlucha Shaladim Kamaisa, right? A Shliach is like the person who sent him. Rabbi Yosef Engel has a Seva called Lekach Tavs. He says in Halacha, there's three levels of Shlichas. One is that what I do counts like the one who sent me did it, it counts for him doing it. In other words, I dispense it, I do it for you. The second level of Shlichas is like an extended arm. 
So it's like I'm an extension. It's his action through me. And the third level is that the Metzius HaShliach is the Metzius HaMashalech. That when it comes to the Shlichus, you are the Meshalech. Halachically, you, your, your identity is a manifestation. It's a personification. It's an embodiment of the one who sent. The Shluch HaShladam Kamaisa, the Tshuva Sarivosh has an expression, Mamash. Shluch HaShladam Kamaisa, Mamash. So that's a similar concept. Or Eved Melech Melech. The servant of the Melech is the Melech. In, in Dicha Lein, in its ultimate sense, there's no, there's no such differentiation. Why is it so hard to be that? Mima Akiv, Sarisha Isa. The truth is, it's the easiest thing to be that. But it's also the hardest thing to be it. It's the easiest thing to be it because it's the most natural state of reality. But it's the hardest to be it because Pare inside keeps on screaming, you're, you're crazy. And you're sick. And you have a big ego. It's the thoughts that I'm separated from that that keep me away from that. And that's why it's really the easiest thing, but it's also the hardest thing. It's really about letting go of everything else. The Alter Rebbe was saying, I want to let go of every definition outside of the truth. I don't want any, def- I don't need any definitions. Essentially, it's, it's, it's the most liberating experience in life. Because it's the only real need of the soul. It's hard because Olam Elosh and Helem, the world comes from the word, the word Olam comes from the word Helem, and the concealments and the blockages always have a different message. No, you need this, you need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. At least you need Gan Eden. At least you need the spiritual fulfillment of Gan Eden. What's Gan Eden? Gan Eden is not a bad thing. Gan Eden is a beautiful thing, and especially as he says here, Dein Gan Eden, you're Gan Eden. But as the Baal Shem Tov says, I go to the palace, and there's amazing, amazing rooms. And even if I know it's from the king, I can get stuck there. And I never meet the king. What's the tefillah? That I shouldn't get stuck in anything. Excellent. Yeah, that's what Abiyakov said. It's not, it's not about being somewhere, not somewhere else. It's wherever I am, I'm fully present there. It's full presence wherever I am. <coughs> now, this itself, if it's not understood, could become another obsession. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have, like, in other words, I, 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 it's, it's painful to say this, but OCD can use these types of stuff in the worst way. It's like, now I'm going to reach the Shlemus of the Al Rebbe. And you become cuckoo. You're like not a normal, like, you, you become detached from normalcy, from emotions, from humans. Like, I don't have needs. I don't know anybody. I don't know myself. Everything you have to understand, even the holiest things, when they're not integrated, they can be misconstrued and become sources of terrible dysfunction when a person is not ready to face their mitzrayim. Whenever these inyanim don't create a deeper menuchas hanefesh and more presence of mind and heart, you know that there's something off. It's just another obsession I'm holding on to. It's another crankshaft. You understand what I'm saying or not? Huh? Yeah, no, it's just another... I have to deal with stuff and I'm not ready to deal with it. So I, I latch on to things, to madregas. I'm looking for madregas and levels of... It's, we're talking about an organic experience that a person is connected to and they can always make parts, make space for all the other parts of themselves. Because if not, you, you can't go out of Mitzrayim if you don't identify Mitzrayim. So there's always an acknowledgement of what Mitzrayim looks like. So there's a, it's not like if, if you decide that you're in a different space, you know, I can become like a computer. Like we speak about, you know, artificial intelligence. I'm artificial. When you're artificial, you could have all the madrigas. It's not... There's no person. Huh? Right. Integration. Integration. What's the eighth of the eighth? Shminis, Shabbat Shminis. You want to know how that fits in with this? Talmud Chachem needs a shminis, a b'shminis. 
Okay, but you don't have to be Mahader more. I don't mean you. Oh. <laughs> it's one of uh, 64. The Marsha says it's one of 64 Samach Dalet because if it's less, it's already Samach Gimel, which is Gas. <laughs> the Marsha says if it's, if it's less than one of 64, it's 63. Is Samach Gimel is Gas, arrogance, Gasos. Okay. So you have it also in a person's life, and sometimes in, in a very practical way. practical way it's a very powerful liberating experience from different pressures that we have a person sometimes has so much pressure so much pressure so much overwhelming pressure and the reason is because my mind is telling me I need this and I need this and I need this yeah. a few days ago I was after the shir I don't remember it was a few days ago we were learned Thursday. I know that day, the next day, whatever it was, a few days ago, not, not after the sh- after last class. So I don't know. Suddenly, in the middle of the day, I had like like fifty responsibilities, and they were all good things and important things and vital things, and a lot of people depended on some things. And I was just feeling overwhelming impression. I, you know, when you don't know what to do first, like <laughs> and everything, so you, like you do nothing, and everything comes crashing down. Because what what are you going to do first? It's one of those moments. And, you know, objective reasoning and analysis doesn't work because the pressure was so intense. And then I, I, I said, you know, let's, let me start from the beginning. What do I really need? What do I need here? So what does Alter Rebbe say? Alter Rebbe says, I don't need it. What do I need? I don't need to impress this person. I don't need to impress that person. I don't need to impress me. What, what do I need? We say, yeah, but this, he's waiting for this, she's waiting for this, they're waiting for this, there's something in Israel, whatever, like all these bunch of deadlines, of 50 deadlines that came together in, you know, in a half an hour. <laughs> and everybody is with their pressures and this. And then I said, Listen, I can't do that. What do I need here? Well, this one will be, but I don't need, I don't need, what, is my, what do I need? And then, <laughs> I thought what Dalton Rebbe said, Ich darf, ich will manage as dich what, what's the only thing I really need? And then I said, you know what? I have, what I, have a, I forgot. I had to also daven still. I had to daven. <laughs> it was in the morning. I didn't daven yet. <laughs> so I said, ich will, the only thing I need, the only thing the neshama in its core, and the male the goof in its core, really needs is only one thing. Dichalein. Everything else is a distraction, even if it doesn't seem that way. So then I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to ask myself one question. What does Hashem <laughs> want for me right now? What does Hashem want? Yeah, but, but, I hear, I, I know all the buts, I know the billion uh, expectations. And being pulled here and this one. But what does Hashem want? That's, uh, that's only one need. Then I said, he probably wants I should daven. <laughs> Now, but I'm talking now in internal experience, not in words. This, we carry so much on our shoulders, right? Jewish fathers and Jewish mothers, another, you know, add that another billion times. We carry so much on our shoulders and it gets overwhelming. This doesn't mean a person is not responsible. It means they're much more responsible. But the responsibility is not of being scattered in the whole world until you're thin and there's nothing left. It's, the responsibility is from showing up to the truest, truest meaning of this moment, right here, right now. 
And the real question is, what does Hashem want from me? What, what's my need? I don't know. Let me ask, what's your need? <laughs> That's my Metzius. We, we make believe we have another Metzius. You don't, you don't need another Metzius. Every other Metzius that we make ourselves in just creates unnecessary ego and pressure. I know there's parts of me that don't agree with this. I get it. That's true. That's part of Mitzrayim. That's why you have to have Metzius Mitzrayim. But in the most lucid space, in the most open space, what Al Rebbe was describing wasn't a Madrege for certain Tzaddikim, you know, for one Tzaddik in, in, in centuries. He's describing the true design of what a neshama looks like. In other words, in your deepest space, this is, this is what you're looking for. What's wrong with Gan Eden Elam? Nothing is wrong with Gan Eden Elam Hab. But Gan Eden Elam Hab is the pshat, still, my need. It's my need for spiritual fulfillment, spiritual experience. That's not Dichalei. Dichalei needs even that is already a distraction from the truth. It's hard for some people to hear. What do you mean? That's everything. No, it's not everything. It's yeshes. It's spiritual yeshes. And the reason it was revealed in our generations is because today this is oxygen. <laughs> today this is not luxury. This is oxygen. As I told you last time, sometimes people are dealing with different struggles, especially in their marriage or their children or themselves mental or emotional or spiritual or physical or financial right there's a lot a lot of struggle a lot of pain a lot of anxiety the ultimate deepest remedy for anxiety is this nakuda. but this can also be a source of anxiety oh i'm not feeling it so now let me be more anxious <laughs> and here again we become obsessive uh, i mentioned last time about when i was in tver yes i was there with rabbi vosner in the panel out of Shabbos that a, a fellow told me you know that he has he's very close to his daughter I mean he asked a question in public good thanks for Shabbos and he's not seeing the tachlis there's no Ganeidin in his house there's only Gehenna in his house so to speak right he didn't use those words but his point was he's love love and love and love and his daughter is not responding he's not getting the nachas he wants so we're not talking about a narcissistic father or mother who couldn't care less about their kids. They just want to look good for the pictures. We're not talking about that. So that's tap mamash chayli nefesh. You need help. Your neighbors don't come before your kids. Your relatives don't come before your kids. Your community doesn't come before your kids. That's pasha. But I'm talking about an, a, a good person. What he's really, I told him, what you're really asking for is you ask for ganeid. The Alter Rebbe said, Ich will nicht dein ganeid. In other words, when you're asking for Ganeid, you don't need to know who you are. You're not asking for Ganeid. What you really want is Dichalein. And this daughter is giving you an opportunity for that. This daughter is giving you an opportunity. And this comes with pain. Because to let go of Ganeid is painful. But it's very liberating. So you shed a few tears, or maybe more than a few tears, and you let go. And then you say, "Mili b'shamayim ve'imchalei chafatzti ba'aretz echvil menish tas dichalei." And in this moment, the deepest pain reaches the deepest joy and the deepest bliss. It's a moment. It's a. It's an internal core. It's this is yichidush abenefesh. And in that moment, there's a shtikol yitzias mitzrayim. Even if in a half an hour I'm going to have to do out of mitzrayim again, that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Ratzon Hashem is in every moment. What does Hashem need from me right now? What does Hashem want from me right now? And that's the only thing that the Neshot Negeya, the Dveik is this moment right here, right now. And then I could let go of everything else. What's my Seder supposed to look like? I don't know. Ask God. <laughs> it's embracing reality with your full presence of mind. And every moment is a moment of redemption. Even if for somebody else, it's like darkness. Darkness is a relative term. Who decides what's darkness? How do you know what's darkness? I told you last time, sometimes one person's darkness is a lot more bright than another person's light. <laughs> they say a maisa, that the Tzemach Tzedek had a son. His youngest son was the Rebbe Marash, Shmuel, the fourth Chabad Rebbe. And he lived with, with Harchava. Was his avoid? 
So he once built himself a house in the city of Lubavitch. It's a little derful, but relatively, it had big windows. It had big windows. So his father, the Tzamech Tzedek, came to take a look at the new house, and he sees big windows. It was like a little, you know, I don't know, modern, but it was like a little uh, progressive. So he says, Was darfst du? What do you need these? So he says, I lichtik. I w- <laughs> he tells his father, I want brightness, I want light in my house. So the Tzamech Tzedek tells him, Bam <laughs> Zayden, by the Alter Rebbe's, I nish gewen azal chigreise fenster. Bam Zayden, by the grandfather, there were no such large windows. So the Rebbe Marash, Shab Shmuel says, no, Bam Zayden is after gewen fenster. He didn't have big windows, it was probably dark in the room. So the Tzamech Tzedek looked at him and said, Nein, Bam Zayden is gewen lichtik, lichtik. <laughs> But my Zayda was bright and more bright and more bright. <laughs> it wasn't dark in the room. <laughs> they say that there was, uh, the Magid had a student, they called him the Volpa. You ever heard of the Volpa? It's a complicated story. He was one of the ch- most Chashavet Talmidim of the Mezritcher Magid. They say when the Magid said Chassidus, everyone went into ecstasy. The Bzusha would faint, the Mavram HaMalach was a Malach, this one would jump, the Blitzer Baditcher would start jumping on the table. The two people that maintained balance was the Alter Rebbe and the Volpa. And then, unfortunately, he became an alcoholic. He became a shikher and he became a beggar. It's a tragic story. He's known as the Volpa by Chassidah. So they say that he once came into a... He, would, he was a beggar. <laughs> and he once came to Psashtetl. And he... Uh, and there was Erev Shabbos. And the Rav of the Shul over there was lighting candles before Shabbos. And he lit... 702 candles. So the Volpa said, what's this? So he says he has a minik to light candles, communion, Shabbos. Shabbos is shin, bay, sof, is 702 candles. So he says, what do you need it? So he says, it should be Shabbos. <laughs> so the Volpa tells him, the Rebbe had gelit gezunden zwei licht und sie gewen genug. <laughs> and said, so my point is, you could, some people could light 702 candles, right? Another person could light two candles, right? They can have a big window and a small window. Sometimes what one person calls, one person's darkness is a lot more light than another person's light. Why? Because, because you're there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the word dichalein is yechida. Yechida means one. Yechida, yachid, dichalein. No, it was very helpful when, when, when I thought about this. It wasn't thinking because the nervous system is going crazy. So it's not thinking. It's not a philosophy. I'm talking about I had to meditate on it. Right? But like the Alter Rebbe says, we have to do this every day. It's not like I did it once in the next 10 years. It's behold there with the, because Mitzrayim comes right back in. There's always party. says, come back, come back to Mitzrayim here. here. Let me, let, I have control of the situation. Somebody got to make a living here. Somebody got to be responsible. What's your Meshuggah your, 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 your There's always the voice of party, come back, come back. That's why every day I have to go out of Mitzrayim again. So it's not a one-time experience and then boom, I'm a free man. Freedom is something we, is, freedom is a muscle. You use it or you lose it. And like all muscles, you need to exercise it. <laughs> freedom is something you have to exercise. With exercise, you don't say, I exercised a year ago. No, the body needs to constantly function and be activated. If not, chas v'shalom, things get fagliver. They get congealed. They get dried out. But at that moment when I was meditating on it, it was really letting go, letting go. This one has an expectation. This one has an expectation. And it's not really their expectation. It's the way I'm perceiving their expectation. Right? I'm going to let down this one and then this one. And then there's a deadline. And it's just late and late. And Lepoil and Alpiteva, I couldn't do it all. Right? So either I could just get into a bad mood, you know, and uh, just start eating. That's what we usually, some of us do. Other people do other stuff, whatever they do. Kol Chada from Shura Delay. Everybody according to them, it's Nayim. Or it was really, really, you know, letting go of everything and asking one question. And the one question is, what does Hashem want from me right here, right now at this moment? Can we always find the right answer? Can we always find the right answer? 
That's a good question. How did I know that Hashem wants me to go daven first? Excellent question, right? Because if I was in Atzala and there was Atzala call, and I would say, no, Hashem wants me to go daven, that's, that's called Shrikh's Dabim, right? Like it says in Allah, if somebody says it's Shabbos and I can't be Mechal Shabbos, I raise a Shoy Fechdom. Hashoyel, Hanishal, right? Hashoyel, I raise a Megunna, Hanishal, I raise a Shoy Fechdom. It says by Shabbos. You know, mm-hmm. Somebody starts asking Shailas. I'll tell you how I know. Let me just answer this question, okay? In okay. The, in the light of the fact that it says, That's what it is. And what's the best you can do? It's not the best that you can do. It's going out of you. Bechol <laughs> Maidecha is not the best you can do. Bechol Maidecha means going out of the ego. That's Bechol Maidecha. But Mela is going to be the best. <laughs> Once you go out, you know, it's like when you go out of gravity, you know, when the, there's a, the rocket space, how long does it take? You ask if it's easy or hard. It's much like the rocket ship, I just realized. How long does it take for the rocket ship to go out of the space with this gravity? You know how long? Huh? Mamish, uh, yeah, a minute, two minutes. Those two minutes obviously are critical because it's launch. But once it's there, there's no gravity anymore. Nothing slips you. <laughs> what does that mean? I, we live in, 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 in a pressure cooker of gravity, right? You're schlepping. You're, everybody's being schlepped, schlepped, schlepped. And the heavier you are, <laughs> right? The heavier you are and the more gravity there is, gravitas, the, the more intense the power and the schlep and whatever that means in a person's life what creates in some people you know more gravity so that's the challenge the challenge is you know liberating myself from that grip that grip of the ego that grip of of, of insecurity that grip of fear in the heart once a person is not a, is not in grip of that there's a freedom because basically I don't need anything over there the, the, the need, the, the, the obsession of need, I don't need. Do you know the liberation of not having needs? So you say, oh, so, so uh, let the bank take away your house. Fine, let your kids starve. Brilliant. That's, that, that's, what, that's part I love saying that. <laughs> oh, I know other people who, who sit and learn all day and, and nobody has what to eat. Fine, brilliant. Because they don't have needs. At the expense of their wife, they have no needs. <laughs> there's nothing to eat for Shabbos. There's nothing to eat for Pesach. Nobody can get a new suit. Because I don't have needs. This is not another people's cheshbon. <laughs> this is not the part. Of art. <laughs> That's why I'm saying everything can be misconstrued. You understand? If it's not... Um, if it's not al <laughs> Not having these types of needs makes you a much more responsible person at the end, not a less responsible person. <laughs> you don't also have the need to be a Hefke Jung. You don't have the need to be a Tzolaz and a Mensch. You don't have the need to fight on on everybody. You don't have the need yeah, to be separate from your spouse. You don't have the need to be detached. You don't have the need to be emotionally disassociated. <laughs> don't forget that. You don't have the need for Gashi. You don't have the need to be dysfunctional. You don't have the need to be afraid. You don't have the need to be in trauma. You don't have the need to get upset. You don't, that, that, those are the needs you don't have. You don't have the needs to get compliments and validation. And if your kid is not complimenting you the way they, you will need them to be, you blow up because I need my kid to tell me what an exceptional father I am. That a hero like me never existed since Adam Arishan. And if not, I have a disappointment because my whole family disrespects me. You can actually be normal. <laughs> you can be normal. Because I'm a malamensh. And as you know, it's not so easy to be normal. <laughs> to be simple is not so simple. Nehemiah said his problem is the opposite. His kids talk a thing that he's the biggest hero since Adam and Isha. What should he do with that? Should he dafke let it go? Then good. I'll keep it. Dream on, baby. <laughs> and your wife also thinks so. Okay, listen, you're an exception. There's always a tzaddik hadar 
who uh, gets it right. What do you need from me right now? And that's what I need. I don't have another need. I don't have another Metsias. It's not like, you, you, we call it surrender. It's not surrender. It's called reality. It's, there's no other. Dichalein means einoid malvante. It's not I'm surrendering to some big guy because I don't have control. No, this is, this is called having control. This is the best control. It's being a channel for, for truth. I just want to be a channel for truth. And when the soul can let go of everything else, it actually experiences the deepest bliss. And the deepest bliss, it says in Chesidus, is not the tainug of the nivra, it's the tainug of the boyde, it's the bliss of the Creator Himself. But the only way I can do this is if I know my Mitzrayim, which means practically if you don't know the other parts in you, it's not going to be real. You understand? It's going to be an escape. It's going to be another mishugas, and then you get disappointed with yourself, and then I become even more mishuga. It's like, oh, well, why don't why 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 am I not like this? Well, well <laughs> why do? I? And then you become. Then I like we have this. Now we start these expectations. The whole expectations. Why do I have this? Why do I have that? That's not the chalain. That's also part of. Uh, that's where Gehenim starts competing with Ganadin. <laughs> Dichalein, it's not Gehenim and it's not Ganadin. Now I'm competing. I'm in, yesterday I was in Ganadin, today I'm in Gehenim. Huh? That's where I was alluding to. So, because a person can, can listen to himself and fool himself to say, okay, I'm going to play because the emesis, he goes into laziness. Right. So, so, so do you yeah, I could start. Uh, unless, unless he knows his, his coping mechanism and he's a real new shaman. Yeah, you have to be very aware of all the jails and all the traps, all the Mitzrayims. I can't leave Mitzrayim if I don't know what it looks like, because I don't, I don't know what I'm, what I'm leaving. And if worst hap- the worst thing happens, I start defining Mitzrayim as redemption. <laughs> and that becomes the worst Mitzrayim, because this Mitzrayim I'll never leave, because it's redemption. <laughs> this is who I am. You know, when people say, this is who I am, like it or leave it. It's not who you are. You're wounded. It's not who you are. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, very well. Yes. Yes. Yes, very well. I want to answer that by Margaret and Shaila because it was a good question. All the questions are good, but I want to answer that I think it'll be helpful. He asked me, how did I know that was the right thing? That's what I should maybe want something else. The answer is because all the other responsibilities were all responsibilities that required my mental uh, creativity. They were not responsibilities of uh, you know, driving somebody somewhere for an urgent situation, which is sometimes exactly what Hashem wants from you. <laughs> Right, to drive somebody to whatever they need to do. <laughs> Maybe I have to drive my daughter to this and this place, and that's exactly what I need to do. That's the Avayda. And that's Dichalein. Yeah. Right? It's important to, to, to say that. You know, the story of the Alt is the story of the Alter Rebbe with Kol Nidre. You know the story. He was in the middle of Kol Nidre, and he p- took off his talus, and he took off his kittel, and he went to the house of a woman who was giving, who just gave birth, and the whole Yishikayach, and the whole family left because everybody wanted to go to Kol Nidre. Everybody wants to be in Shul for Yom Kippur, and the poor woman was, uh, the poor woman, the, the poor baby was crying, and she had no milk because she hasn't eaten. So the Alter went, and you know, and he chopped up wood on Yom Kippur, and he made a fire, and he ignited the flame, and he cooked soup, and he fed her so she could nurse her baby. So the Rebbe told over the story, he heard it from his father-in-law, the Rebbe Dayat, and he said, what's the Chiddush of the story? It's a halach and shulchan aruch, pikoach nefesh, it's mitzvah begadol. You don't send a child for pikoach nefesh, because then people could think that it's only for children. Mitzvah begadol, the greatest person is supposed to do it, because it's hatzalas nefashas, saving a life, is doichi, yom kippur, what's the question? It's not a big Chiddush. Every Hatzala member knows it, you get into the Hatzala event, especially if the rabbi is in the middle of a sermon, yom kippur night, so it's even better. 
you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and you go off to the hospital where we have to go. So the Rebbe said, the Chiddush of the Maish is not that Alter Rebbe did it. It's as a mitten kol nidere hated their filth, hated their filth, the gevein. In the middle of, no, there was no WhatsApp message. <laughs> in Liyajna, there were no WhatsApps. I don't know why they didn't have WhatsApps in Liyajna, but they didn't. There were no WhatsApps, and there were no even uh, walkie-talkies, and uh, whether they have uh, beepers or beepers. <laughs> they didn't have beepers. He felt it. In the middle of Kol Nidre, which is the ultimate Dveikas, and as he said, even on a regular day, this was the Altar Rebbe's Dveikas, Mili Bashman. This wasn't on Yom Kippur. So you can imagine the Dveikas on Yom Kippur. And I still remember he gave us came. The Altar Rebbe felt, and he's with Atalus. And he said, it says in Zoya that Atalus is Prisu de Malka. The Talus is that the king envelops you. So he's completely enveloped by Ein Soif. Right? And it's not he's enveloped with Atalus physically. His whole Metzius was Dveikas. Especially on Yom Kippur, that a regular Jew is in a Dveikas. And the especially in Yenet Doidus in Shtetl, where there was no Pizzit on Nefesh, there was nothing else. It wasn't like there were another billion things to do, you know? There were no clips, there were no, nobody got the news, there was nothing else to do. So Shtetl. So even a regular Jew was in a different Matzav. Today, you know, it's hard to be present for six minutes anywhere. You're saying six seconds. Well, you've been... You've been here already an hour, almost an hour. <laughs> give yourself credit, give yourself credit. Hatader felt, he felt the cry of this, of this woman. That's what Dichalein looks like. How do you know Dichalein means I should daven now? Maybe the avoid is to give soup. And that was his avoid, he knew that's what God wants. So back to your question, the responsibilities that I had were all responsibilities that were not technical. They were technical stuff, but it was primarily, it required my soul, my consciousness, my output, my work, my creativity. The only way I would be able to tune into any of that is with a daven, the good davening. <laughs> so I realized that without that, that it's all going to be just a pressure cooker of living up to other people's expectations. It's not going to be authentic. It's not going to be real. And therefore, the output will also be compromised. But on the other hand, to daven with menucha, you need a pause. You need to go away from everything. But there's so much. So that's why I had to ask, do I really need anything? And if all, this one will be disappointed, okay, so you'll be disappointed. I, I can only show up with the tools I have if you'll ask me to, uh, to be something I'm not. I can't. I'm sorry. If you, if you can't accept that, okay, it's fine. It's also fine. We get rid of all the strings and all the ropes that attach us to so many things and they take us away from full presence. But it's an avoider. It's an avoider because the spaceship, getting it out of the place of, getting it out of the, the environment of gravity, there's a lot of push, pushback. <laughs> right. Uh, but then the spaceship comes back, it lands. That's how it is. That's also part of the avoid. The power of Dichalein is it doesn't look any certain way. Ganadin has an image, a beautiful image. What does it look like? Sometimes it looks very bright, sometimes it doesn't. So what? I'm not trying to control the situation. I'm not looking for any benefits. I don't even need results. There'll be results also. Don't worry about it. There'll be results. But it's not, it's not the Indian. There'll be results because truth produces results. That's how it is. <laughs> There'll be results. But that's not the issue. Sometimes you don't have the answer. You're right. Usually you don't. Usually you don't. So Rabbi, what was the to say that you have cause um, creates the space? Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever it is that a person really uh, has to tune into, or <laughs> it is, the pushing aside the million things that you that Baruch Hashem will, that you have the strength to do with it, by giving you that space to really see what's most important. Right. The pause allows us to internalize, to, to make space, to uh, not to be schlepped into spaces. 
That's why a person needs to, that's why davening and, and, and meditation, his bainanus, his bainanus, it's so important because, you know, we're running and running and running and running, but who's running? I'm, I, you, you know, some people are operating on 2% of their personality. It's like if, if, if you tune in to, to 20% of your personality in one hour, you'll do more than you're doing in a month. Because I'm doing one thing with 2% of my personality because I'm completely scattered and overwhelmed. Tune into yourself and then one hour you'll accomplish more than you did in a whole month. Because there's going to be a person, there's a mensch. It, 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 it's also a lot of, it, it, paradoxically, dichalein requires a lot of self-respect. <laughs> Think about the respect you have to have for a person who's capable of saying this. How much, I, I, I don't know, maybe I, I don't know why this popped into me, so I'm going to say maybe it's not the right way to express myself. How much self-respect did al Rebbe have that he knew he could, that this is how he felt about himself? How much self-respect does that give you? That, that he, could, he could know that I am a person, I don't want Ganeid and I want you. And that's the ultimate bittel. This self-respect is the ultimate bittel. It's not like, oh, oh, I'm a big guy. It's the exact opposite. It's self-respect really for Dick Halein. If this is who you are, and this is what you're capable of, it's actually respect for God. And that's what real self-respect means. Self-respect main is not my fahakta ego. Oh, you're disrespecting me? Because <laughs> you argue with me? Because you looked at me the wrong way? This, this is real self-respect. How much self-respect do you have to have for your time, for your space, for your energy? Because if you know you're showing up fully with your whole heart and your whole love, you, you need to respect that. And like here again, like everything, it can be terribly misconstrued. Like, you know, self-respect becomes an avoid disorder. Oh, you're not respecting me. You're not respecting me. You're not respecting me. Here it's the exact opposite of an avoid disorder. It's self-respect. You're like, it's like Shmiras Hamikdash. There's a mitzvah called Shmiras Hamikdash. As Mikdashi Tiro. It's one of the mitzvahs. In Hilchas Beis Abchira, the Ramah Mepedek has, there's a mitzvah to protect the Beis Hamikdash, to guard the Beis Hamikdash. Why? Because the Beis Hamikdash needs to be guarded. And the Rambam says it's not because of thieves. That you also need Shmira. It's even if there are no thieves. A Beis Hamikdash needs protection. It's a form of honor. You're protecting a Beis Hamikdash. Anything that's precious needs to be protected. There's Shmira. Right? Zachar and Shomer. It's mitzvah say to Shmiru. There's a Shmira. When a person is dichalein, was one with Hashem, you, you need shmida, you need protection, good protection. Here, the self and the selfless are one. What are the symptoms of knowing that this is dysfunctional? The moment I'm thinking about these things and I'm becoming anxious and angry and overwhelmed <laughs> and disappointed with everybody including me it, it, it's not this <laughs> I need some help with my anxiety which is fine it's, it's another mitzrayim it's another coping mechanism it's not the right self. yeah it, it's I'm in a place of anxiety which is fine I, I have a pada I have a mitzrayim and mitzrayim is going crazy okay I get it that's what all, all anxiety is mitzrayim and for some of us anxiety is very very deep and it's incessant and you have to Honor, you have to honor that journey. You can't just say, Dichalein, I have no anxiety. I have no anxiety. And your wife says, why are you so anxious? I'm anxious, you're anxious. I'm not anxious. We're going to have a beautiful seder tonight. A beautiful seder, stop it. <laughs> How beautiful. <laughs> You know, it says in Kahelis, Divrei Chachamim Benachas Nishmayim, right? When people's words of the wise are said with pleasantness, with Nachas. When it's not Chachma, you yell, right? Divrei Chachamim Benachas Nishmayim. So there was somebody once giving a drasha, and he said, Since I'm a Chachem, so I'm a Mela, Divrei Chachamim Benachas Nishmayim, Hetzachain, Hetzachain. So whenever the Benachas is not with Nachas, you understand, it's important to. Uh, it's important to make a chesh ben anefesh. And it's not to guilt a person, because guilt is also a mitzrayim. Guilt, by the way, is one of the worst things. 
I don't mean to burn down every Avodah Zodah in one day, but, you know, guilt is one of the worst Mitzrayims in the world. And you look right at what happens after guilt. You get closer to your kids after guilt. You feel more enthusiastic about life. There's more love in you. Huh? I daven with more kavan. I learn Torah with more Hislavos. I do a mitzvah with more love and passion. I have more Avos Yisrael. Usually it's not what happens after guilt. So you right away know it's, it's a gewaldic coping mechanism to keep you underwater, to keep you stifled, to keep you crushed, to keep you angry and anxious. Guilt doesn't mean tshuva. Tshuva is not guilt. Tshuva means I want to become better. I, I, I can improve. Yeah. I learn about my yesterday's Mitzrayim, so today I could liberate myself. That's not guilt. That's, be- that's beautiful. That's amazing. It's incredible. Guilt is a voice that wants to make sure that you know how horrible you are. <laughs> and that's not going to help you ever. You could say I did something that was a bad mistake and maybe I did not know who I was and I want to learn from it and learn primarily what was the voice inside of me that got me into this place. That's very good. That's beautiful. That's called tshuva. <coughs> anyway, the Chevra Toif is the Indian here. Rabbi Zak, Salz Beseide, Vazokte. Ah? Should Emil Typhus. Yo. Oh, if I would have been after davening, then I would have to, I would have to daven again. <laughs> there was no Eitzah for me, only davening. There was no Eitzah. It was all mental stuff. <laughs> There's also, you know, we also have to have a little sense of humor. Granted, you know, somebody called me one day and he says, he needs an eights. I said, what do you need an eights for? He says, I have nothing to do with my life. I have nothing to do with my life. I wake up in the morning and I don't know what to do. The guy told me he watches television six hours every night. He's not interested in learning, so he goes, comes home from work early in six hours. And this is an adult. He's my, he's my age. <laughs> I'm saying, so you have to also have gra- gratitude, right? Another guy called me. He doesn't know what not to do because he's overwhelmed. I say, be thankful that, you know, that you feel needed. So we just have to have gratitude for that. But generally, if it's a mental issue, uh, if, it's, if, it's a mental, if it's a mental responsibility, we have to go much deeper. I'm telling you, when you show up with, with 2% of yourself, you're doing everything and you're doing nothing. It's like your wife asks you if you could spend some time with her, so you say, well, we're going to Casca anyway, let's kill two birds with one stone. We'll shop in Casca and we'll spend time. It's usually not an answer that works. <laughs> Why not? Seven hours, is that enough? <laughs> the answer is you won't be in Casca, you won't be with your wife. <laughs> Better 10 minutes of an of a intimate conversation than seven hours of I'm on my phone. The Rebbe once said it of Abreng and it says in Medrash, Pischuli kechudu shal machad vani eftach alchem kepischu shalulam. Hashem says, open up the door for me, the window for me, like a chudu shal machad. Chudu shal machad is the, the point, the eye, the point of a needle. Open up. In other words, what's chudu shal machad? It's a tiny opening. So he said, the Rebbe Shtazakta Yidin, Gib me finith minut. Abedi finith minut zon zayin, nor meine. Hashem tells a Jew, give me five minutes, but these five minutes should be mine, should belong only to me. Give me five minutes, but those five minutes should be mine. In other words, should be you and me. That's it. Nothing else. I can give five hours, but it's, uh, it's scattered. And then there's, there's the chalei. And because and, once you give those five minutes, the rest of the day is already also going to be different. <laughs> you understand that? Once you have five minutes of the chalei, so then 23 hours and 55 minutes will already also be different. Trust me. <laughs> you know, when a husband and a wife have moments that it's, it's com- complete oneness, even when everybody goes back to their own world, it's already different. Because you're in a relationship. 
You have a real relationship. Once you touch a real relationship, even when you're on your own, you're in a relationship. A relationship is constant. There's no connection. If I'm, connect, if I'm one with you, I'm one with you. Even if I'm in Australia, I'm still one with you. Right? Nafshek should have been nafshek. You're logged in. So five minutes of that level of authenticity def- redefines the whole day. It's, it, whatever you, wherever you are, it's b'chol d'rachecha da'eyu. There's da'eyu. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim means to be fully present, full presence. <laughs> full presence. Mitzrayim Magvulim means the opposite of presence. I can't be fully present. And, and you, we all know what's happening in our head. How present do we know how to be? <laughs> I'm asking all of you. I know with me, how pre- you know, the, the head is so meshuga these days. And then Baruch Hashem, many of us have this. So even if the head is not meshuga for two minutes... There's something else over there makes you meshuga. And what I mean by meshuga is, how can I be present to anything? And then there's a part of you, what, 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 what a batlin? What, your shlamazel, you, well, you have nothing to do but be present? <laughs> Anaya avodah zara, presence. Who has time to be presence? Come. <laughs> it's Pesach, b'dikas chametz. Come on, what presence? <laughs> Pesach. You're going to be present on Pesach? Pesach is supposed to be miserable. Anaya Maisa, presence, present on Pesach. <laughs> Rebbe once said that Al Rebbe, when he was in Mizrich, he lived in one bedroom. He had a little tiny bedroom. It was very, very poor. He had one shirt, and he would go of Shabbos to the out of Shabbos to the river and bathe it, <laughs> wash it. So he had a a clean shirt for Shabbos. That was the level of poverty. So. It, Al when he was by the Maggid of Mizrich. I mean, after that, he was also very poor, but over there, he was extreme. So he had one little bedroom. So he said, but B'dikas Chametz took him a whole night. And he said, he didn't have a pantry with uh, 20 bottles of mashka, <laughs> and in the freezer, pizza, and in the freezer, cheesecake, and kokosh cake. <laughs> it was one little room, so I don't know how much. So somebody, so, so somebody, the Rebbe Dayat said it over, so somebody asked him, what? It's a little room, so what are you going to be baitik? And what did he have already? <laughs> what did he store there? And how long does it take to put an up, to put an up dikas chametz back? So he said, what's that? The Mishnah says in Pesachim, Eil ar ba asr baitkin as chametz loyir haner. The night of our ba asr, right? You have to check chametz loyir haner. He says, what starts, what's Eil ar ba asr? He says, you have to take the Eil, and you have to check 14, the seven middas of the Nefesh of Bahamas, and the seven middas of the Nefesh of Lekis. And then the question is, how do you do it in one night? <laughs> That's the question. My point is, even B'dikas Chametz was presence. B'dikas Chametz could be a Gehenim. <laughs> and it could be a Gan Eden. And it could be Dichalein. And in Dichalein, Whatever it is, it is. And everybody has B'dikas Chametz. We're talking now the inner Chametz. And re- what, 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 what allows for real presence, for full presence? Even Gan Eden could be a distraction. That's the Vart, right? Because I'm looking for results and I'm looking to control, or at least I'm looking for the experience. And if I'm looking for the experience, there's also room for terrible disappointment and frustration. Because I don't have the experience. Dichalein means I'm fully present to whatever is in this moment. Because in this moment, one thing you have, maybe you don't have any experience, but you have Dichalein, you have you. Inayid Mulvada. It's a very deep, it's a very deep experience, this. It's not, it's not words, it's a deep experience. I think our generation has a schuz that a lot of the children are challenging their parents to touch this place. Because the only way you could be fully present for your children, even when there's a lot of pain and disappointment, is with this. If you're stuck in Gan Eden, it gets very hard. Because I'm always, I'm looking for the experience of Yiddishkeit. I want the Shabbos table. I want the ambiance. Dichalein is ultimate Mesidus Nefesh. But it's Mesidus Nefesh with Tainug, with pleasure. 
It's not Mesidus Nefesh of I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a martyr, I'm a martyr, I murder myself for my kids. That's not the word. The worst thing that kids want to hear is that their parents are martyrs. It's the worst thing because they blame themselves. I, I killed my parents. Sometimes parents want their children to feel that they're martyrs. <laughs> and the poor kids are now, they're sensitive kids, right? You should know that a lot of kids who live Yiddishkeit, Rabbi Vosnik, could testify. One of the worst things that kills them deep down is they know that they destroyed their parents' life. And that doesn't let them heal because they look at themselves as evil. So the more the parents make them see how they destroyed their whole family, the less they can heal because look how evil I am. MS? It's very deep. But the father's a Yerei Shemayim. Yitaka destroyed my life. Yitaka destroyed my life. What's the answer to that? The answer to that is only Dichalein. Nishgan Eden. How do you know what's called a destroyed life? How do you know? What, what's a destroyed life? What's a destroyed family? Why? Because the Shatchin, the Yenta across the street says that it's a destroyed family. The Yenta defines reality. I don't mean a Yenta. It could be a male Yenta, whatever. I mean the Musik from a Yenta. Huh? No, it's very deep. Once the father gives a message to the child how it didn't destroy his life, it still has some path of thought. It's to show the way he comes back. That's for sure. Destroying the yeah. mother says it, but this is shown to one Yeah. Person. And the other hand, the father says, what, am I going to lie? It has to be authentic. Yeah, you did shake up our life. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we have the perfect child. <laughs> we hatched you. We matched you. We wanted to dispatch you. <laughs> and now we're busy. Going to Kashinafshi, going to Gadleino, going Patch, very good. So 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 you you made yeah, you made a Khurban by Yashani, you made a Khurban by Yashlishiv Yashemi, you made a Khurban by Yisravi for our imaginary third base Amikdush that we built. So it's really only when the father and mother transform themselves to become Dikhalain, then no, you didn't destroy my life. You actually made me you made me divine. You actually made me divine. You liberated me from the religious ego. And that sets, that changes everything. But this is a very, this is a very, it's a very emotional shift. It's not, uh, it's an emotion, this doesn't come without tears. This is not a, this is not a fake shift. It's a very deep emotional shift. And it doesn't mean a person shouldn't want and pray for toiv hanidav nigla for revealed goodness. Of course everybody wants that. Al tevienu lidei nisayin. But it means wherever I am right now, there's the opportunity of showing up here fully. And it's not tomorrow and the next day. And uh, As I said last time in the last Shia, you know, what looks right now like Gehenim could be much deeper than Gan Eden if it's connected to the truth. And then it's Takenat Gehenim. Okay, this was a much longer introduction than I thought it was, but it was worth it, Mr. Amino, or not? Yeah. Huh? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it's only better than the text because there's text you understand that it's the pause it's the pause between the notes if there's no notes there's no pause so it's really the text that defines the pause you understand the Yaakov there's no Shabbos without Sunday through Friday. If we just say, let's just stop working so we can pause, you know what that's going to look like, yeah? It's called a lady gay. Yoshvikranas. <laughs> let's pause. Life needs a pause. Okay, we're all pausing. <laughs> the Buddhists like doing that. You know, they go up on a mountain and they pause. And there's something to it. You let go of the ego. But the power of Shabbos is, you know, Sheshis Yom Tavad was Sisekom so the text are the words, and then the pause is the silence, and the, the silence is defined by the, by the words. Okay. The second paragraph on Reish Ayin Dalet. Ayin Dalet Resh. We'll learn Blinada for another 15 minutes, okay, till 9.30. Mili Bashamayim was the Dvekus of Admur Hazakin of the Alter Rebbe. So, in other words, it's very nice that Tzavach Tzedek brings it. 
But, uh, you know, shal no lecha me'araglecha. Take your shoes off your feet. It's the Alter Rebbe's dveikas one. What's vilsta? Like, what do you want from people? Mikal makai, mekivu and shinyan zenem ebamai mechsidus. Since this was sheared, it's a machzadik sheared in his mind, mechzid. It's been espoused in bechal elam kulai, and it was publicized in the whole world. Had a move on sheshemetz mineu shayech lavaydus kolachad misro. Things that are not shayech to people remain hidden. The fact that it's a machzadik felt that he wants to articulate it, and it was espoused, and the Rebbe taught it. He's saying it's because shemetz mineu. Shemetz mineu means a a shemetz is um. A glimmer of it, a, 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 a little particle of it, is shaykh to every single Jew. How? So he says, a klolo sinyin baza, she b'sho, she yehudi yoy mishma yisro, havaya lekeinu havaya echot, she ozu meisir nafshe b'koyach, harezen nechshav k'maya avoyde, de vahavtas Hashem alakecha b'chol avavcha b'chol nafshecha b'chol meidecha, v'ad loifen hava divim chalich hafasti barit kibir atzamach tzadik. This is essentially what the kavanah, what Shema Yisrael is. And Shema Yisrael is meant for every Jew. Shema Yisrael is not something that the Alter Rebbe used to say only himself. What is Shema Yisrael? What does Shema Yisrael really mean? He says, Hashem Elekeinu, Hashem Echad. What does it really mean? Hashem is our God. Havai is Elekeinu. It's our consciousness. Hashem, we say three names. Hashem, Elekeinu, Hashem Echad. Just say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Echad. Make it short. The answer is, you're saying something. Shema Yisrael. Listen, Yisrael. Hashem Eleikeinu. Hashem is Yudke Vavke. Eleikeinu is Eleikeinu, which is our consciousness, our experience. It's all Hashem Echad. In other words, and that's a very, very profound idea, that all, everything, Eleikeinu is my consciousness, right? It's the Eleikim is Begmatriya Teva, Eleikim is Midas Adin, Midas Adzimtzim, the way it's restricted. But it's all really Echad. In other words, all the voices inside of me, everything that's going on, really, it's all Echad. Huh? It's all Echad. And that means, as he says, Mesidus Nefesh Bekayach. Mesidus Nefesh Bekayach means that here is the potentiality of surrendering my soul, or better, better even, aligning my soul with the whole source, where all I am and all I want is oneness. Because that's who I am. It's not an expectation as more as it's a description of reality. And that's really so important to understand. The word expectation, you know, when we talk about the word mitzvah, mitzvah is commandment. It says in Chassidus, the Rebbe says somewhere, it says every mitzvah, he says, is a loshen tzivui or a loshen asid, a loshen avtacha. The word vahafta in Hebrew means two things. You should love. You know what else it means? You will love. Vahafta, you will love. That defines a mitzvah. A mitzvah is not, it's not only you should, you will. You know why you should? Because you will. <laughs> You understand? A mitzvah means to live with reality. Reality is going to take. It, it, reality is going to prevail because it's real. <laughs> Either I could embrace it or fight it, and until it takes over. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a little bit of a harsh example. You know, a doctor meets somebody and says, "Listen, you're going to have a heart attack and lose weight." <laughs> Okay, that's if you wait for three years. But you know what? <laughs> you could do it nicely now and lose weight and respect your body and you won't have to lose weight through having a heart attack. Chas You understand what I'm saying? A mitzvah doesn't mean you should. A mitzvah means you will. But mainly you should. It's not should like, who, who are you to tell me? Who are you? It's like, this is reality. So when we describe Erev Ahavta, we're describing the natural state of the soul. The natural state of the soul is That's what he's revealing. And that's what Shema is expressing. So Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad You know it says you have to have Kavana when you say Shema. Even other parts. You don't have to. But Shema you have to have Kavana. What's the Kavana of Shema? What should you think when you're saying Shema? So here is one of the main ideas that Shema is conveying. That real ability to let go of everything besides Hashem Echad. Yeah. Yeah. Krishna is the, the ultimate bitl. So you're asking a question. The Chodesh Minester were asking for things. So, and the Chodesh Minester is higher than Krishna. So the truth is that the Alter Rebbe explains that Shemayna Esra is a deeper bitl because Shemayna Esra, we start off Hashem Svasai Tiftach of which means Hashem, you open my lips and I'll just repeat what you're saying. So it's like 
Hashem talking through you. So it's not, my, it's not even my needs, it's his needs. Rufeinu Hashem v'nei Rafei. It's his needs because he wanted to do it with the In the ultimate Amkos, the Neshama wants complete Vekas. And Hashem says, no, 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 I need to do it with the Go back. <laughs> I need you to be healthy. I need you to make money. I need you to have Parnosa. <laughs> It's, it's paradox than what we think, right? Think Shema, we're talking about Hashem. Shema Nesu, we're talking about ourselves. It's the opposite. Shema you saw, you're talking about the Neshama. And Shema Nesu, you're talking about Hashem. He wants to do the I never came up with that idea. <laughs> nobody would have ever come up with the idea of did the It was like nobody would have ever come up. You know, how do you know God exists? Who came up with the idea of marriage? Would any normal person come up with the idea of marriage? I would say Bachram go to Bachram's dormitories and girls go to girls' dormitories. So they can make a mess by the bachrim and the girls can be clean in the girls' dormitories. Hashem said, no. <laughs> the dormitory is good in yeshiva and then you get married to each other. It's only a divine idea. Marriage is a divine idea, but it's good news. Because what it means is that it's, it's a divine idea. In other words, for, to make it work, you need to be divine. You heard what I just said? To make marriage work, you need to be divine. You have to have bittel. So Shemayin Esra is God's idea. So this is the idea of Shema Yisrael. And this is the Ava Bechol of Avcha Bechol Navsha Bechol Maidach. What's Maidacha? Maidacha means, as I said, Ma'oid, beyond my Medit of Agbala, beyond what I'm saying I am. Now we'll understand why Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is in Krishna. There's a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. When do we mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? So Chazal say they put it into Krishna. It's in Krishna. That's why we say Vayoymer every day. So the Rajbah asks a famous question, why they put the two mitzvahs together? They should have put, it's a mitzvah of Krishna, it's a mitzvah of Krishna. Shach b'chav kumecha. It's a mitzvah of Laman Tiska, Yisem says, Gemar Yisem, but a separate mitzvah. Chazal put the two together. It's an interesting thing. I think it's the only mitzvah. They took two separate mitzvahs, min ha and they made one shalant out of them. What's the Havana? So the Rebbe is going to explain the Meirah Dekenyan. The only way you can go out from Mitzrayim is through Krishna. <laughs> It's not they took two separate things. There's a mitzvah to say Shema, the mitzvah of the God of Mitzrayim. Before Krishna, a person is still in Mitzrayim. What Mitzrayim? Not necessarily Pada. It could be a holy Mitzrayim. I told you Mitzrayim could look holy. It could be holy, it could look holy. I'm very holy. But I have a big, big holy ego. Or big, big holy guilt, or big, big holy disappointment and anger. It's all holy, but it's mitzrayim. What's missing is the bechol moidecha. I still couldn't get out of me. And as we learned in the last year, it's called Ein Oisin Etzayinu Shalmakim. The Gemara says the second parish of Krishna is Ein Oisin Etzayinu Shalmakim. Asks the Magad how it says Lahavas Hashem Alakechem because it doesn't say Bechal Moidecha. The Bechal Moidecha makes the difference. What's Bechal Moidecha? Moid, beyond the need for the self validation. Danganed. I want. I I want the spiritual experience. I want it. I need it, which means I'm in Gullus. I don't know. I don't know myself. My heart is still in jail. I'm still locked up. It's 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 a lot better than other mitzrayims, no question. <laughs> you're doing good things. You're doing holy things. You want holy things, but I'm still busy wanting. I'm still busy with that. And you'll see, the soul doesn't need it. When the soul liberates itself from that, when we when we have that moment of of the soul liberating itself from that, you, you, the soul starts sobbing. And it's a complete oneness that I don't need even I don't I don't need I don't even need Ganadin. It's Bakal Maidah. Well if nay or in the Mesidas never shall call upon him because I've been a Shmay Sala Shamala Kay not Shamachot. Virak Bashas Krishma, Bifrad by Midas Pasagurish the Krishma Shah by Sarakhili is Kavano Baza Yatim de Khavis Kavana de Krishma. Allah and Shahana is at least the first part. The whole Krishna needs Kavana, but the first Pasik needs it specially. Aza Yatsima Mitsada Magvulam Shalai. So the whole davening is a hachana for Krishna to be able to go out of one's limitations. This is the idea that my soul is completely dedicated, completely committed to Hashem and to His Torah and to His mitzvahs. And then the whole day is different. Like we said before, those five minutes of absolute connection and presence, the whole day your heart is open. It's an expression in... Uh, in Shirim, Ani Yeshena, 
I am asleep, but my heart is awake. What's pshat? Ani yeshena, the ego, the I, could be asleep. It's fine. A part of me is asleep, but velibi, the heart, is pumping. The heart is awake. It says in Zohar, Even when I'm asleep in Galus, as I libi, that's how the Medrash describes it. It says, Your ma'id is not my ma'id. Ma'id shalcha means what's very, ma'id means very. What's very for you? For one person going out of their comfort zone means that instead of giving an $18 check, they give a $36 check. For another person, it means instead of giving $2 million, it means giving $3 million. So somebody will say, oh, he just gave 36 Let me also give 36 No, no. You know that's not. Bechol ma'idcha means your bechol ma'idcha. Going out of my mitzrayim, my mitzrayim is not yours. So my ma'id, ma'id is not your ma'id. It's a different coping mechanism. For some people, being emotionally present is very easy. That's not their problem. <laughs> Sometimes they're too emotional. <laughs> they're very, for another person, that's not their issue. But for another person, that's their whole mitzrayim. They, they disconnect emotionally. Every person, the fum should have delay. You have to know what your ma'id is. So what does this mean? My avoida gets liberated from all Mitzrayim. Paroi will not control what my avoida looks like. The limitations that I impose myself in giving tzedakah, I liberate myself from it. The limitations I impose, a person imposes on the shiurim that he has in learning. The limitations, the mitzrayim that a person imposes on the limitations they have in their avoid of davening. In all these three things, obviously, he's talking about tzedakah, teirah, and tefillah. I can live in mitzrayim. My teirah is in mitzrayim, my tzedakah is in mitzrayim, my tefillah is in mitzrayim. And b'chal ma'idecha is that the person lets go of that mitzrayim. And what happens is, when I free myself internally, the world around me gets liberated also from its limitations. I create an energy in the world that Hashem gives the person also beyond limits. Now the Rebbe says Hashem gives the Jew Gashmias, and the Jew takes the Gashmias and transforms it into Ruchnis. Hashem gives us matter, and we take the matter and convert it into energy. So when the person opens themselves up to go to a place beyond Hagbala in themselves, in their Tzedakah, in their Tefillah, in their Teira, it has a ripple effect, you know, like in the laws of attraction. And it affects also the world, that I'm opened up to opportunities that are beyond limitation in the world. That the flow is beyond Agbala. It's not just something inside of me, but a person starts seeing the results around them. We start seeing, you know, when my dance changes, the dance of those around me also changes. That's why people are more powerful than they think. You know, they think, I can't affect anybody. I can't affect anybody. But I could affect me. And when I affect me, I affect everybody. Because the way we posture, the way we hold our posture, affects everybody else's posture. So that's what he says here. So when a person in their own avoid, they can go out of limitations. And what does it mean to go out of limitations? It means that all the limitations that I imposed on myself, including those with guilt and anxiety and overwhelming pressure, all these things that we spoke about, it expresses itself in how a person gives to somebody else. And how a person learns, how a person davens. And I create these mitzrayims and I'm stuck in them. And I can't get out of them, and my heart is not open. When a person can go out of that, and that's what Vahafta Bechal Maidecha is, it's extremely liberating. It's a liberation from Mitzrayim. So my tzedakah, which includes money or includes a favor, includes my heart, tzedakah exists on all of them. It's fully open. There's an open heart there. I don't have to be stuck, I don't have to be stingy emotionally, financially, physically, spiritually. 
I don't have to be stingy because I'm not busy protecting myself. I'm not a Mitzrayim anymore. I'm not a slave. I'm a free person. You know, free love, an open heart, an open heart. You know, people who have an open heart. They're not afraid. They're not self-conscious. Now, some, somebody here is sitting and thinking, what about boundaries? You need boundaries. If not, people are going to use you. doesn't mean that people use you. Fakert. It means that I'm not living as a slave because I'm busy projecting about how people are going to use me. Because that's the worst slavery. I'm using myself. <laughs> then I'm using myself. And the same is true with the tefillah, the same is true with the Torah. So now he goes to the last sif. This is the last sif. And that's why it says in Micha, like the days that you left Mitzrayim, I will show Nifloyus. So the question is, it should have said Kiyoim, not Kimei. Mitzrayim was one day, not Kimei. The answer is, no. Every day since Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim continues the avoid of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. Kimei means during the days of Tzayim Mitzrayim. It didn't happen once. We left once. But every day since, every person needs to leave Mitzrayim. Like we said, When a person gives Siddhaka, it's beyond limitation beyond measurements what does this look like i didn't realize you see <laughs> I, I, I see i see it was the protest the introduction look what the rebbe says here about davening he says even though they come to him they're bothering him a person is davening and they come to him and they say, come on, you have a business to run or you have askanas to do. <laughs> you have a lot of askanas to do or whatever it is. You have time for davening, but you have time for davening, but kavana. Tefillah b'tzibur noch could be shorter, but tefillah b'kavana could take a long time. You don't have time. Huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously there's, there's matzavim in halach, uh, right, that come before davening. You know, there's the nyanam of Isaac, but mitzvah, pikoach nefesh, whatever it is. Pidyan shvoyim, etc. But here we're talking about different cheshboinus of the world. And the cheshboinus of the world impose all these limitations. And it becomes very difficult. There's all these voices in you that say, no, you know, just get it over with and move on. And Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim means to let go of these voices, to let go of these expectations. Why? Because they're taking all you away from the truth. The truth is, like you said earlier in the mind, when it comes to Havis Hashem, it's an Indian of Bechal Maidecha. There's no Mididas of Hakbalas, there's no limitations. You're beyond. I go beyond the Didav Akbal. I go beyond all those voices that want to confine me and put me into limitation. The same is true with learning. Guy says, I don't have time to learn every day. No, this person learns every day. And here again, beyond. The limitations. But when a person lives this inside themselves, first of all, it nullifies the Mitzrayim of spirit, spiritual Mitzrayim, but it also obliterates the Mitzrayim of Klippe, of non holiness. And this ultimately nullifies literally Mitzrayim. Like we said before, everything begins in the heart. And it has a ripple effect. So nullifying my Mitzrayim nullifies the spiritual Mitzrayim in the world. And then it nullifies the physical Mitzrayim in the world. And that's what Geula means. Geula means when this consciousness of liberation from all those internal coping mechanisms that cause us to be enslaved to our lowest angels, we're liberated from it. 
So the world becomes a liberated place. You radiate a lifestyle of redemptive consciousness. You understand? You radiate a lifestyle of redemption. And it has effects everywhere. It has effects. People who live with redemption, they radiate it to others around them. And everybody's dance changes. Now he goes back to what he started in the beginning. That's why we mention Yitzhak Mitzrayim every day. And even when Mashiach comes, and the question was, when Mashiach comes, there's going to be wonders, even the Gabi Yitzhak Mitzrayim. So why should we mention it then? The answer is, even when Mashiach comes, there's going to be a Gewaldika Hafla, a wonder of the Avoid of Iskafia. What's the Avoid of Iskafia? There's two types of avoda, skafia and ishapcha. Iskafia means to subdue, koifa, like koifa noisa. Ishapcha means to transform, like venapachal. When Mashiach comes, everything is going to be ishapcha. The darkness will be transformed into light. Today, it's still v'yamash chayshech. You could still feel darkness. The goal out of Mitzrayim, even in a state of v'yamash chayshech, has such a hafla that even when Mashiach comes, we're going to have to mention that. In other words, there's such a power in Eskafia that even in a state of Eshapcha, you mention the moire de kechidish of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim in a state of Eskafia. Because till Mashiach comes, we're all confronting voices of darkness inside and outside. So how do you go out of Mitzrayim? So you have to bring in Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim into the darkness. That's not complete transformation. It's a skafia. Skafia means I know that there's darkness. I can hear its voice. I see its power. I make space for it with compassion. And then I choose not to be a slave. But I have to choose not to be a slave because it's not transformed. It's choices. This is called a skafia. There's such a power in a skafia, in a way more than in his hapcha that even when Mashiach comes, we're still going to be mentioning the Gula of Mitzrayim, which was still in a state of Eskafia. You, you ha- the Herst? Ah? Yeah. Obviously, Eskafia is much higher because <laughs> it's transformed. But there's a special Tainug. You know, sometimes you see people, they did a lot of work on themselves. And they, they, they went on a very deep journey and they came out on the other side and a lot of things were transformed. And six months later, or a year or two years, they don't recognize themselves. But they're always going to miss you know, that first moment when they had to confront so much darkness and they chose to liberate themselves from it. There's a special appreciation for that moment. It's not that you go back to there. You don't want to go back to there because transformation is the purpose but there's a special uh, nostalgia there's a special tainug that exists in the in the resilience in the authenticity that comes out in Eskafia because of the struggle and that's why even when Mashiach comes we're going to mention Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim Mitzrayah <laughs> And it says in Zoya, that through his kafi, Hashem's glory extends in all the world, and the word is Hiskafia. In all the worlds, but certainly in our world, the physical world, where the Jewish people are immersed in Torah and mitzvahs, and doing the will of Hashem in the Avoida of love. With the whole heart and the whole soul and b'chol ma'idecha, with your infinity, and this brings closer as haket sam lachayshach. The pasuk says in Eiv, there is an end to darkness. Kate sam lachayshach. Darkness is not infinite. Darkness is dark, and anything that's dark has an end. Kate sam lachayshach. All darkness has an end. End darkness is not unlimited. Why? Because darkness is the absence of truth. The absence of truth can't be infinite. Infinity only exists in truth. What's infinity? Infinity means it's everything, it's everywhere. Darkness doesn't have that power. How does it have everything and everywhere? It can look like it has it sometimes. And those people who are represented by darkness, that's what they want. They want that the chayshach should extend forever. So Eiv says, Kate sam la chayshach. 
Hashem made an end for the darkness. The darkness serves a purpose. It's not, this posse comforted the Jewish people for thousands of years. The darkness has an end. It should be speedily in our time. The true and ultimate redemption. Because there were many Gaulas in Jewish history, but we're talking about the Gula Amitis, the true redemption, and the Shleim of the complete redemption. And then, then we'll see with our eyes of flesh, as Kiyum Hayyu, the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Novi Micha, like the days in which you left Mitznaim, I will show you the wonders of Mashiach Tzedkeno. May it be taken from Yad Mamash. L'chaim. Can you tell me the truth? Thursday there's no shear. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been uh, in California. I'm in California. If you hear, sh- you're not here Shabbos. I've been in uh, California. Yeah. Everybody have a beautiful week, and if I don't see you, I freilich in yamtiv, and may we see take the geula mitzvah v'ashlema take it from yad mamish. The Jewish people are worthy of geula. Kate some lechayshach can happen already. Huh? They deserve it. Yeah. There was a yid here in the tent, and he was saying some nadesha things, some whatever. So, so uh, another yid tells me, he says, listen. I don't agree with them. Ah, <laughs> 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 Exact. I feel a culture by column of poetry is snow, but I'm not. Is the mohus? The mohus is is a echad yachid and meyuchid and Hashem is baruch belishum pirud belishum meifin. Or mashe kasev and nichrasa nefesh ayim ayamel. It does is the pchinas Yaakov in the neshama. Or the pchinas is snow in the neshama is echad yachid and meyuchid and shayach keng shum pirud. While in ganzen echad yachid and meyuchid. The chalik from the neshama of us is conscious in the gulf. I cut it off. But the nekudas apnimis, yeah, does lo yidachem ino nidach. It's a half of a fella. So, whatever it is in Halach, it's an Ishkin Stina. Oh, does that mean Bemuchesh? Yeah, a person is normal. The Mashal Neman addict, yeah. His whole life, his whole consciousness is, is fahakt and disease. Yeah, yeah. Nicht der Jakob, der 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 Jakob wird abgestellt. Der Nefesh der Bahamas sind dicht. Der Nefesh der Lekis heißt aber am Neid. Er schleppt mit. Er schleppt. Das ist der Chelik von den Schammen, was dicht zu heißen in der Consciousness von der Mensch. Das kann ich abschneiden. Aber der Nekude kann man nicht, weil sie weil kalt Mohusse ist alle Kuss. Das ist Guck dir, wir können nicht abschneiden in der Meberstin. Wir können nicht abschneiden in der Meberstin von sich allein. Ja? Können wir nicht abschneiden. Ja. Ja. Sure. Gamatem. Psudis Teuvis. Thank you for being here.
Thank you for being here and for being moved. Sometimes a person is here as if we are stain. But of this Zetman, the reactions. They say that you say that some people wear their soul on their sleeve. You're one of them. It's a good thing. <laughs> they wear their soul on their sleeve. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shmechel de medav shmechelen, evein de medaveinen. So state in Zoya, vai loy, woe to the speaker who speaks al udnin de lo shamin. He speaks to ears of us hedonist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nechemia. Hatzloche Rabba, Hatzloche Rabba. I'm going to shut it. Ay, 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 